I think around this time last year in the Aryan Khan case. And uh, there, there was again, you know, apparently as it increasingly is evident, uh, overreach by the Narcotics Control Bureau. And uh, Aryan Khan, son of uh, Shah Rukh Khan, spent three weeks in jail. So, I mean, we, are, we seem to be reaching a point where the police and the law enforcement agencies, and you mentioned Gautam Navlakha's case very importantly as well, where the police was not willing to, or the NIA was not willing to put him even under house arrest despite a Supreme Court order. Where is the problem? Is it that these agencies believe that they are above the law? Do they believe that they will get political protection if they follow a particular political agenda? What really? You're not the Attorney General anymore, so you can speak very freely. Yeah, as, I said, as I said, sometimes uh, they are more loyal than the king. So if you do something, NIA is also police. If you do something, maybe excessive, but they feel that it will please the political bosses, so they will do it. Secondly, there's also a general feeling that if it's a government authority, a bureaucrat, or, or the police or whatever, they might willy-nilly, uh, you know, get their way. And the courts will not take it very uh, seriously or harshly if their actions are somewhat, you know, their aberrations, as opposed to an individual's aberrations. So that's the general feeling that we will get away with something or the other. The court will they will take it lightly. It might please the bosses. So how, how do you stop it, uh, Mr. Rodhki? Do you think that there should be some, you know, some kind of penal measures against those see, who do not follow court orders? Obviously, see, the law is very clear that everybody has to follow the court's order, whether it's an individual, it's a private organization, it's a bureaucrat, it's a police, or X or Y. Everybody has to follow the court order. And it is for the court to uphold its esteem by ensuring that there should not be a feeling that if a private person disobeys the law, he might be hauled up uh, and he may go to jail. But if a government authority uh, doesn't follow the law, uh, it'll be uh, treated lightly. So people are entitled to know that everybody should be treated equal. The scales of justice are equal, whoever is on whichever side. So it's actually for the court and the system of the judiciary from top to bottom to, to ensure and uphold its esteem in the eyes of the public. Again, we go back to rule of law. If the general feeling goes around that you may do uh, something or the other uh, and uh, one side will get away lightly, it's going to you know, uh, uh, lead to a complete breakdown of the law. The system of, the ju system of justice must be dispensed with, with an equal hand, with an, with an equal uh, thing. If it is harsh, it has to be harsh on both. If it is light, it has to be light on both. So that, that is what uh, should be done, and it is for the Supreme Court to set the tone. So in that sense, just on the, on the Aryan Khan case, since it made so many headlines, would you really like to see either the court or uh, some authority that has the powers to act against those NCB officials who are now accused, in a way, of overreach? See, the court should have acted even in the Aryan Khan case. Should have acted. Should have acted. Uh, apart from releasing him, should have acted by saying if there is n nothing in that case, there is no evidence. You put a young boy in jail for three weeks because there was a lot of uh, hoo-ha about this case. Everybody was watching. I mean, he was out in three weeks. Could have taken three months. Mm -hmm. I told them that you are lucky that three weeks, to you it seems a lot, but when I do cases in the Supreme Court, Three weeks, three months, four months, six months, one year is a normal period for an under trial to get bail if he can go from court to court. Therefore, the court could have acted and said, now let us see which are the officers who directed arrest instead of just, uh, you know, letting things go. Could have acted and said, apart from anything else, it could have told NCB, as I said uh, in that occasion, if you made a mistake, if the mistake was genuine, why didn't you apologize to the person whom you arrested wrongly? Why didn't you apologize in the court? And if you, if you think you can get away with any arrest and only think that bail can be granted, the court could have jolly well imposed costs, imposed some penal punishment, monetary punishment for uh, you know, curtailing somebody's liberty. It has happened, I mean, 
uh, abroad. It happens routinely for wrong arrests. If you uh, put in a person for a month or two or three, you can get millions of dollars from the state. Here it can't be millions, but at least there'd be a token. It could have been a fine of 10,000 rupees on the officer who directed the arrest. As simple as that. You know, Saurabh, I'm presuming you wrote this book before the court judgment came in the money laundering case, in the PMLA case, the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Because when I read that judgment, as a student of law, it seems to have completely overturned the very basis of our jurisprudence. You are now told that even first the enforcement directed officers have such uh, have powers equivalent to that of the police and they can come to your house and you are presumed to be guilty if you are raided and you have to prove your innocence. So the PMLA judgment has effectively reversed the basic principle of rule of law, innocent till proven guilty. And it is leading to the enforcement directorate in particular getting over, overarching powers and people being kept in jail for months on end. Now, given the fact that your book looks at cases that shaped India's financial landscape, are you worried that the courts also need to recognize that when you pass such orders, a number of business persons will say, we will do business anywhere else but in India? You're absolutely right. Had that judgment come in advance... I would have definitely covered it. It would have been your chapter 16. It would probably have been chapter 0, actually. Because today, there is a problem of massive unemployment in our country. We talk about how the youth of today don't have sufficient jobs. And the way to ensure that does not happen is by creating further jobs, right? And to create a job, it's not going to be a magic wand that's going to come. And not everyone can get government employment. You need to have foster business and a good business environment. Now, you cannot possibly have a good business environment when every business person thinks that if I even do business as per the T, there is some overzealous officer who has been armed by the legislature through draconian legislations like the PMLA who will put me in jail. There are so many Indian businessmen that I know, I know uh, Mr. Rodgi will also know, who are leaving this country in droves, setting up shop outside India taking jobs that really belong within our country for our people and taking them outside. There's an export of kind of a, of, of, of the, kind of a brain drain which has begun again. Uh, so I think the way these authorities behave is not only because they themselves believe they will get away with it. They have been empowered, unfortunately, by legislation. Right? The PMLA and the NIA are, of course, also we must remember, these are acts passed by the UPA government, right? So in this, all politicians are the same. So I think I'll keep it away from party political. Having said that, there have been further draconian amendments in the recent past. There is, there is no getting away from that either. So it's, uh, I, you can't be too cute about it. The fact is that there is a greater oppression in the more recent past of business persons than there was 10 years ago. Uh, so, and it was responsibility of the courts to come to the aid of the citizen and uphold the constitution. That is their job, right? Their job is not to give speeches or sessions and seminars, but to strike down legislation which is patently discriminatory.